I'm actually going to make a copy of my initial cube now. So I'm going to click on the move tool and the single copy and I'm going to move a copy of that one back along the Y axis here again just to keep it visually clear but have a couple of options to show you here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this newly unioned object and I'm going to move it into position to subtract it away from that cube. So again using the transform move tool I'm going to snap on a known corner of this object again using object snaps clicking here and moving over and clicking on a second known corner of our original object and instead of just chewing away at the corner there if I jump back to my other file here you can see that I actually had moved it up on this original cube to kind of get a base established on this one so what I'm going to do is do that now. I'm going to again use the move tool set to self, not to copy. And I'm going to move this directly upward. And in order to do that, I'm going to click again on my known corner and start dragging upward. And you'll see that it is snapping along that edge because in my object snaps, I have snap to segment selected down here. So it actually is snapping to that segment. I could move all the way up to the midpoint. I could set different options for, you know, if I wanted to divide that segment to an interval, I could do that. But what I want to do is, if you'll notice in the Actions palette, it says, if I tap Command while dragging, it will actually move perpendicular to the reference plane. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to tap the Command key, and you'll see visually that that little blue up-down arrow and now I'm constrained to a vertical movement only. So if I tap the command key again, this would be the control key on Windows, it is only moving along the reference plane now. I can move along a segment because I can snap to it, but that vertical movement is constrained just when I'm hovering over that one segment of the original object. If I tap command again, I am now constrained to vertical movement. I'm just gonna start moving in the upward direction and up here in my coordinates, I'm going to type three feet enter. And that object now has moved into position exactly where I wanted it. So again, going back to my original file here, we can see the cut begins three feet up off of the base. All right, before we actually move forward with the Boolean subtraction, I'm going to select my independent cubes over here, and I'm just going to drag a window around all three. So before I click, shift click, shift click to select all of them, this time I'm going to drag a window. You could drag a crossing window from right to left, and you'll notice crossing windows work a little bit differently because they only have to touch the objects whereas a window selection, everything has to be inside of the window if I'm dragging from left to right. So you notice if I drag a window like this, there's only one object inside my selection area. If I drag a window from right to left, it's whatever my crossing window touches, which is a very old school CAD way of doing selections. And it's actually really fantastic that that exists in FormZ as well. So dragging a window around all three objects will grab all of them. And this time I'm going to use my assistant. So I'm going to tap the space bar, tap the M key for move. And because I use the move tool so much, it's right here at the top. I can just hit enter. And again, clicking on a known corner. See my perpendicular snap is still on from the last time. So I'm going to tap the command key, which would be the control key on Windows. And I'm going to move that over to the first position on the second cube. And I'm going to click one more time on that known corner, start dragging vertically. This time I'm not going to constrain it vertically. Again, I'm just going to type three feet enter because I was already moving in that direction and it puts it right in place. Now, the reason I did this in both different ways is because I want to illustrate this and how Booleans can be additive over time versus doing them all at once. So we introduced the Boolean union tool to get this shape. And in this case over here, we have our original three cubes. I'm going to show you now the difference tool and how they can just stack up on top of each other. So again, under the modify tools, this time we're going to use the difference command. And the difference says it creates new objects by subtracting one object from another. You always want to select the object that you want to subtract from first. All right. So you can see right here, click is to select the object to difference from. 
So I'm going to click my cube first, and then it says click is to select the object which to subtract. So the second click is always the subtraction object. All right, so I'm going to click on this unioned piece of geometry, and you'll notice it just immediately cuts all of that away from that first object, which is exactly the result I was looking for. I'm going to undo that real quick because you'll notice that I had one face that protruded up above the object while the other faces were coplanar. And I did that on purpose because I wanted you to realize that you can have a little bit of insurance when faces extend beyond the geometry to actually get a really clean cut. But if you do indeed have coplanar faces when you do a Boolean union, you will get perfectly clean cutaways as well. So again, the difference tool, select the object you want to keep, and then select the object you want to do the cutting, and it slices that object away, and we get a nice clean piece of geometry as the output. If I turn on shaded display, we can see that the shadows are very clean, and it's a very nicely formed object. So going back to shaded work mode, I'm going to this time click on the difference tool again. Again, we're gonna select the object we wanna keep, which is the initial cube. In this one, we're gonna do this a couple different ways in succession. I'm going to click on the big cube first to subtract away. So you'll notice that it cut that one away, but not these two. Again, these are separate pieces of geometry and they aren't gonna get cut away unless they had been unioned together beforehand. So again, these are all coplanar faces now that are residing within these objects. And this time what I'm gonna do is, again with the difference tool, click on the object I wanna keep. And then this time I'm gonna use the shift key to select additional objects. And we'll cut both of these disjointed objects away at the same time. So hold down the shift key. I'm gonna click on the first one and the second one. And then I'm just going to click out here in space. You'll see that little play icon and that's gonna cut both of those away at the same time. So when you're doing Booleans, you don't have to do all of that pre-processing to get all those objects together and unioned first. You can actually do them one at a time or in multiple stages as you move forward. It's really flexible and it gives you lots of options as you create and modify new objects. Okay, let's discuss two more tools in the Modify palette, which are the Intersect Boolean operation and the Boolean split operation. So what I've done here is quickly just drawn a sphere. The origin of the sphere is at the bottom corner of this cube and it overlaps the geometry of the original cube to show you what an intersection does. Intersection, you can see, kind of creates an object that lives at the intersection of two other objects as their source. So it really doesn't matter in this instance which object you click on first when you're doing this Boolean operation because uh, both of these outer objects are gonna go away and we're gonna have a resultant object. So I'll click on the sphere first in this case, click on the cube as my second object, and you can see now that it has done a two-way slice through each one of those objects to create a new unique object that lived at the intersection of those two originals. Pretty self-explanatory how intersection works. It always works the same, doesn't matter what order you click them in. Over here, we're going to look at the Boolean split option, and there's a few different options inside the tool options for Boolean split. We can do a one-way split, or we can do a two-way split. We'll start with a one-way split, and in this case, it does matter which order you click in. So you can see here, it says select the object to split, which means the second object is going to be the object that does the splitting, right? So the object that I wanna split in this case is going to be the cube. I'm gonna use the sphere to slice through the cube in a volumetric way. So clicking on that cube first, clicking on that sphere second, and it gets rid of the sphere and you can see now that it has created a slice through, which is this object over here that we did, but it left the remainder of the cube. And so if I grab this and move it away, you can see that we actually have a curving spherical surface definition for that geometry inside of there. All right, I'm gonna undo that a couple times, get back to the original two pieces of geometry, and this time I'm going to just split it in the other direction. Again, still on the one-way split, I'm gonna click on the sphere first and click on the cube object second. And you can see it now has cut into the sphere with the cube object. 
And if I select this piece and move it out of the way, you can see that we've come up with some pretty complicated geometry there using that source and secondary object. Let's undo that. Two clicks. And let's do a two-way split. So again, with the Boolean split tool, click on two-way. Now it doesn't matter which one you pick first because both objects are going to split each other. So we're going to end up with three objects, the cube, the intersection, and the sphere. So again, not mattering which order we click in, click on the cube, click on the sphere. It doesn't look like anything really changed, but if I use the move tool and click and move this piece off to the side, we have that spherical cut. And if I click here and move the sphere that way, you can see we have the cubic cuts in there. So Boolean operations are very powerful ways to modify geometry, and it forces you to think a little bit differently because you need to define the object that is going to do the cutting. In a future video, we're going to talk about live Booleans and actually doing some sculpting on objects in a much more live manner, which is a little bit different than this. So that's something to look forward to. But with this one, this is a very traditional way of modifying geometry with some very powerful tools inside of FormZ. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.